That doesn't make it. Before we went to dinner, you were beginning to tell stories about Lenny. Mm -hmm. That's where we sort of left off. Do you want to start there, or do you want to? Well, I think at least one of them got told, but one of my favorite, two, two, two Lenny you stories. Lenny did a lot of the negotiations for permits. And one of the things you did was you have to list every piece of equipment. Now, for those of you who don't know, didn't know Lenny, she was four foot eleven and a quarter. She stretched, <laughs> um, and you had to list all the equipment you were going to use in this demonstration. And she, when you went to this the conference where you worked on your permit, and she had a, a policy of listing everything they had ever used. Mm -hmm. So anything mm -hmm. that got used last time and the time before and the time before, I'm going to use that list. So they, because maybe we won't want to bring it back. So you know, it ranged from the fires on the White House sidewalk, which meant wash tubs and garbage cans and this and this and that and the other thing. And, and, and the effigy soaked yes. flammable substances. And, and, and then it, it got to include chains. And she was negotiating for some permit, I don't know. She had this whole list of things. I think probably none of which were going to be used. And the last item, and they're apparently all sitting around a conference table. And he reads this and this and this. Chains. You need to speak up a little. Chains and <laughs> steel balls. <laughs> he said, steel balls? <laughs> she said, steel balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never explained it. <laughs> so you don't have to say what you're going to do with them. <laughs> That's right. Because I got all the permits for the boot. <laughs> So that was on one of our lists. I never remember steel balls. <laughs> no, there weren't any steel, steel balls. But apparently meant for a great conference. <laughs> <laughs> well, I <laughs> want one, one more thing on, on, on Lenny. Again, four foot eleven and a quarter when she stretched. And it was after the archives action, well, action which was the, the day after the ERA died. And they took people down to the first precinct, which is down or it's first to second, I think it's first precinct, down in the southwest near where I live. And so I walked in uh, on my way home to make sure that everything had gone well and she was okay and she was still there. And they had put women in some cells in the back. And one officer made an untoward comment. And it really wasn't all that bad. Mm -hmm. But it was out of line. So if the word comes up to the front and there's Lenny, Lenny hears about it. And she's the liaison person. And she's His mother taught him better, and he should not. With her finger and his right face, <laughs> discussing that the officer should not make that kind of comment. <laughs> I'd like to read one of Lenny's poems. Okay, which is called Debutante. All right, read it loudly. Yes. Summoning a day-long smile like a princess at festival time, sashed with the name of my hometown, wearing prim white puffed sleeves heels and all. I did not run. I even remembered to say excuse me to the tourist lady before I chained to the White House fence. <laughs> and at the police station, I was not the one who climbed the cell bars and sang boisterously and danced on the table. <laughs> I even remembered to call the officer's servant as he would me. Mama would be so proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Maureen Fiedler who was dancing. Yes, on it the was table. Maureen <laughs> Fiedler who was dancing on the table. I don't know what's up. Maureen Fiedler is a commentator on NPR now. Mm -hmm. uh, interfaith voices. Oh. Uh, 
she's a Catholic sister. Um, she's a sister of Loretto now. Was she then? Uh, she, I'm not sure. She started out as a sister of Mercy, but while most of the Mercies are very progressive, her order was pretty unprogressive. Needless to say, when she asked for a leave of absence, she got it quite quickly. <laughs> And, uh, and when she transferred to the Loretto's, that came quite quickly. So I'm not sure the exact date of that transfer. I think she might have still been a Sister of Mercy then. She and I worked together at the Quixote Center, um, did a couple of things. But Maureen also was the founder of, co-founder of what we called Catholics Act for ERA, which she shortened to Catholics for ERA. And she was in Florida and Nevada and in Illinois, and she's a great rally speaker. But for our last arrest at the archives, we're sitting in the cell planning our defense, and we decide that Maureen will be one of our spokespeople because she had just returned from the fast in Springfield, Illinois. And, you know, so we rehearsed it, and Maureen started in with her stentorian rally speaker voice and I said to her no if you speak to the judge like that we'll never get out of here <laughs> I said moderate voice and make good eye contact with the judge which she did and we did get out that that uh, day um, Leslie do you remember Leslie's yes. last name? oh Leslie Stewart Leslie Stewart was our other spokesperson. Uh, she had some congenital birth defects that she was working on and she was about to face major six surgery. months of, of major surgery and lying on her back most of the time and she told the judge she wanted to have a good memory to, to think about during that time. Um, and so those were our two spokespeople. And not only did we get out then, but when we were sentenced, and we got uh, 20 hours of community service and supervised probation. The judge very clearly said to us, there's no need for you to do anything different than what you're doing now. <laughs> <laughs> so part of my community service was going to a, uh, uh, a right, right to Choose rally in New Jersey and passing out leaflets for the uh, Religious Coalition for Abortion Rights. And the other part of my community service was writing language lessons for the officer who fingerprinted me. Uh, he was Puerto Rican and he was very nice and uh, my hand was sweating and I, w I was nervous because if anybody was gonna get something extra thrown at them, it would be me and Cheryl Dalton because we had a more illustrious record than anybody else. You were the outstanding criminals in the crowd. Right. <laughs> and Sherry always sang. Right. She always raised our spirits. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, he, and, and he was so nice that he kept fingerprinting me. He says, oh, don't be so nervous. Your hand is sweating. This is fine. This is fine. You have such a nice face. <laughs> you, you must be a teacher. Well, I, I am. I, one of the things I did was teach English as a second language. And then he looked at me and he said, I know you, you climbed that fence, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this was July 1st, and we went over the fence on February 15th. And, um, you know, you're never supposed to admit to anything like that. So I just sort of went, and he said, oh, you're a bad girl. <laughs> so he said, I saw your picture in the file. So I wrote him, um, he, we, we got to talking and he said he was having trouble getting a promotion because of his English. And I explained to him how there are different levels and genres of language and he just didn't know the more formal one. And I wrote him a bunch of language lessons to help him understand different stylistic levels of English. And that was the other part of my community service. Uh, and he, he, I know he must have tried, but I never got it. He promised me he would get me a picture, get me the picture of me going over the fence. 
but I did. I never received it. I'm sure he tried, but I'm glad he didn't lose his job. He put his job on the line. You mean you guys didn't have a photographer there? What? You didn't have photographers there to to, well, to memorialize your escapades? We, we have some, but we Sonia really went over fast. We yes, really that, you have to realize that the work that we did on each one of those oh. actions was so precise, so timed, so crafted. And part of it was that we wanted to be able to complete the act because they were all symbolic and they were all on dates that were important to women. Mm -hmm. So that doing, we really, things went fast. Mm -hmm. And I can remember the first time when we blocked the street mm -hmm. and how there was the group of people that came around mm -hmm. that were the decoys. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jim Callahan drove the van. Uh, and we no, went after Jim, Bill. Bill, Bill excuse Bill me, Bill Callahan. Callahan. And it, it, was, it was quite, it was very professionally done. Right. <laughs> and there, and were no, there were no cell phones then? No, no cell phones. No cell phones. Yeah. No cell phones. Mm -hmm. no cell phones. Which mm -hmm. action was the first one that you blocked the street? Uh, really, well, Mary Hartzler's action was in the first one yeah. in, in 1980 at the Republican National Headquarters. Committee headquarters. Right. When the ERA was taken out of the Republican Oh, that's when platform. we chained ourselves to the front mm -hmm. door. They, <clears throat> the building, are you familiar with the building on Capitol Hill? Yeah. Uh, it has Assume steps not. going up, and there's a, 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 pardon me, a railing on both sides, and they... D.C. police were noted for coming with the chain uh, clippers and oh, just yes. cutting the chains as soon as they saw them. <clears throat> and my husband, who was a physicist, knew this. I told him about it. And he, of course, was a government employee. He didn't want to get involved in any way in the action. But he handed me a piece of paper and said, tell your person to buy this. And they would want this kind of chain. And so we chained ourselves up there uh, in rows going chains around our waist to the next person who had a chain and with the padlocks and then the end person chained herself to the person next to her and then to the uh, the iron railing. And the, because we were there it, right across the stairway there was no way to go in the front door unless you went down on your hands and knees which a couple of the Republicans did just to show us we couldn't stop them from going in their front door. But you also chained the front door shut. We, yes. Well, mm -hmm. that was a problem because actually we did. They would go up to the door and then they had to, it got complicated. But the the issue, it was it was just a fascinating day. Uh, we were there and, and about 5.30 in the afternoon, uh, we just unchained ourselves and left. We never were arrested. But, but I think the point was that you were willing to risk that. Oh, sure. And I mean, that, was, that was really the issue more than anything else. Well, the issue was that the police couldn't cut the chains. Yes, absolutely. And, and it was so planned that there was an instant rally crowd there. You know, the, the peop there were people loitering around the building. Well, and they're new, they you know, it's right by, by the house office building. So you have reporters and, you know, news people wandering around. It was well known what was going on half a block away from where their offices were. And mm -hmm. they'd come by and, and say something. And we had a person walking in front of us on the sidewalk, sort of information for the press or any, any media that wanted to come up and talk about the issue. And uh, I think... They were more scared of the bad press they would get or how they would look in the media by doing something about our action than doing something to us because they really did their best to stay away from us, the Republicans in, in the building and so on. But Mary, on the other hand, there was that guard that came behind you and broke that glass and you were right up against that glass. And that really was worrisome. And that was frightening. Well, they got very concerned because the glass was broken, and then they were, <clears throat> pardon me, they were afraid that some of us would, would be injured because we were right in standing around in the broken glass. And they asked permission. They came up to us and said, 
We would like to come up to where you are and clear off the glass so no one is hurt. Do you mind? I think we should explain that in a little more detail because I'm not sure it gets through. First of all, if the police had been able to cut those chains in the first 10 minutes, we would have been, you would have, but they couldn't. Right. You know, I, thanks, so, to, thanks to the physicists who did, right. who did a little uh, research. Right, so between the chains and the fact that we had an instant crowd there planted as passerbys, they couldn't have done anything for at least an hour, and by that time, you had a crowd coming down from Capitol Hill. People, all day long there were people. Even, right. and there, were, there, there were a bunch of houses along there, their offices, but they looked like houses. And uh, you know, people came, everyone came out to see what was going on. But this, as you described it to me when I taped you a, long, a while ago, there were two big doors with like a brass Oh, the front frame. doors to the Republican National Headquarters. And they were glass. Yeah. And you all, I wasn't able to go because we had a family vacation plan, but I had, had helped with the planning of the event and then talked with Mary afterwards. We actually vacationed at Mary's farm. <laughs> you know, the Fuller family didn't have a lot of money, and she had the farm and lent it out to feminist causes and considered a vacation for us to be a feminist cause. So, uh, as, as I understand it, you on one side, and I think it was Cheryl Dalton on the yeah, other side, came up and they each pushed. We, we one ran of the up to the in. door mm -hmm. and we had the chains in hand ready to wrap. The door had brass handles, each door had a brass handle. And our job, the two of us, we read the. Let me start over, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, we got in a car, we stopped the car right in front of their headquarters. We waited until we were both ready, we had our chains in our hands. And we ran out of the car and ran up to the door so that they could not open the door or do anything to obstruct our being able to take the chains which we were carrying and wrap them around the handle and, and padlock them. So they could now no longer open their front door. That was our goal because now we wanted to put our line across in front of the front door of the people and we did not want them to have any access to via the front door. And that worked. And they, they had a, 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 like a doorman, not, he wasn't really a door, sort of a person who watches to see who comes in the, in the building of standing there. And we did this before he could react, actually. And you could just see the look on his face. He looked very carefully at what we had done and he just turned to somebody and shook his head like, you know, we're not gonna get this door open. Mm -hmm. But as you told me, you were on one of the doors, uh, you know, and you had your foot up there and you were pushing to keep it closed. Yeah, keep it, because he was trying to open it. And one of the security agents was enraged and he hit the door from further up. And he was pushing it out while you were pushing it in. And it was a brass frame and the brass frame started to give and the entire pane of glass, about a seven foot pane of glass, just came cascading down. Absolutely, like, like a guillotine. And Afterwards, um, that's, the, that's what they wanted to come up and sweep away so nobody would be hurt. That was that pain in their front door. And afterwards, Mary said to me, in retrospect, Georgia, I'm beginning to think you're right and there is a God. <laughs> because glass shards, huge, falling all around me. I could have been killed and I wasn't even cut. <laughs> yes, you said to me, I didn't have a screw. But, but she tells me, she told me that she had a slice in her pants when she got home. She realized that she had a slice down there. But not Mary. Not Mary. Mary was fine. No, so was maybe a, there is a God, huh? Well, it was, a fat, it was a day that I will never forget. I feel oh, very, very strongly <laughs> positive about having done it and... Uh, Survived. And, well... Uh, Doing something like that had a big, profound effect on my on my views and my fir and my subsequent actions. And my, uh, the funny remark for anyone who hasn't heard it here, maybe you all have already, is I, my mother heard about it, of course, and she just looked at me and she said, "Janie, remember, we are Republican." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> she did not know what had happened to her well, nice daughter. There's I so much. I encountered a British family who were just sightseeing 
they had a stroller with a small child and an older child, and uh, they were there at the head 